Pseudonym A pseudonym, or alias, is a name that a person or group assumes for a particular purpose, which can differ from their first or true name, orthonym. Pseudonyms include stage names and usernames, ring names, pen names, nicknames, aliases, superhero or villain identities and code names, gamer identifications, and regnal names of emperors, popes, and other monarchs. Historically, they have often taken the form of anagrams, graicisms, and Latinizations, although there are many other methods of choosing a pseudonym. Pseudonyms should not be confused with new names that replace old ones and become the individual's full-time name. Pseudonyms are part-time names, used only in certain contexts, usually adopted to hide an individual's real identity, as with writer's pen names, graffiti artist tags, resistance fighters or terrorists noms to gear, and computer hackers' handles. Actors, musicians, and other performers sometimes use stage names, for example, to mask their ethnic background. In some cases, pseudonyms are adopted because they are part of a cultural or organizational tradition, for example devotional names used by members of some religious institutes, and cadre names used by Communist Party leaders such as Trotsky and Lenin. A pseudonym may also be used for personal reasons, for example, an individual may prefer to be called or known by a name that differs from their given or legal name, but is not ready to take the numerous steps to get their name legally changed or an individual may simply feel that the context and content of fan exchange offer no reason, legal or otherwise, to provide their given or legal name. A collective name or collective pseudonym is one shared by two or more persons, for example the co-authors of a work, such as Ellery Queen, Nicholas Bourbaki, or James S. A. Corey. The term is derived from the Greek, pseudonymon, literally false name, from, pseudos, lie, falsehood and, anima, name. A pseudonym is distinct from an allonym, which is the, real, name of another person, assumed by the author of a work of art. This may occur when someone is ghostwriting a book or play, or in parody, or when using a front name, such as by screenwriters blacklisted in Hollywood in the 1950s and 1960s. See also pseudepigraph, for falsely attributed authorship. Sometimes people change their name in such a manner that the new name becomes permanent and is used by all who know the person. This is not an alias or pseudonym, but in fact a new name. In many countries, including common law countries, a name change can be ratified by a court and become a person's new legal name. For example, in the 1960s, black civil rights campaigner Malcolm Little changed his surname to X to represent his unknown African ancestral name Thoth had been lost when his ancestors were brought to North America as slaves. He then changed his name again to Malik el Shabazz when he converted to Islam. Likewise some Jews adopted Hebrew family names upon emigrating to Israel, dropping surnames that had been in their families for generations. The politician David Ben-Gurion, for example, was born David Grun in Poland. He adopted his Hebrew name in 1910, when he published his first article in a Zionist journal in Jerusalem. Many transgender people also choose to adopt a new name, typically around the time of their social transitioning, to resemble their desired gender better than their birth name. Business persons of ethnic minorities in some parts of the world are sometimes advised by an employer to use a pseudonym that is common or acceptable in that area when conducting business, to overcome racial or religious bias. Criminals may use aliases, fictitious business names, and dummy corporations, corporate shells, to hide their identity or to impersonate other persons or entities in order to commit fraud. Aliases and fictitious business names used for dummy corporations may become so complex that, in the words of the Washington Post, getting to the truth requires a walk down a bizarre labyrinth and multiple government agencies may become involved to uncover the truth. A pen name, or nom de plume, French for pen name, is a pseudonym, sometimes a particular form of the real name, adopted by an author, or on the author's behalf by their publishers. Some female authors used male pen names, in particular in the 19th century, when writing was a male-dominated profession. The Bronte family used pen names for their early work, so as not to reveal their gender, see below, and so that local residents would not know that the books related to people of the neighborhood. The Brontes used their neighbors as inspiration for characters in many of their books. Anne Bronte published The Tenant of Wildfell Hall under the name Acton Bell. Charlotte Bronte published Shirley and Jane Eyre under the name Currer Bell. Emily Bronte published Wuthering Heights as Ellis Bell. A well known example of the former is Marianne Evans, who wrote as George Eliot. Another example is Amandine Aurora Lucille Dupont, 
a 19th century French writer who used the pen name George Sand. In contrast, some 20th and 21st century male romance novelists have used female pen names. A few examples of male authors using female pseudonyms include Brindle Chase, Peter O'Donnell, wrote as Madeline Brent, and Christopher Wood, wrote as Penny Sutton and Rosie Dixon. A pen name may be used if the writer's real name is likely to be confused with the name of another writer or notable individual, or if their real name is deemed to be unsuitable. Authors who write both fiction and nonfiction, or in different genres, may use different pen names to avoid confusing their readers. In some cases, an author may become better known by his pen name than his real name. One famous example of this is Samuel Clemens writing under the pen name Mark Twain. British mathematician Charles Dodson, who wrote fantasy novels under the pen name Lewis Carroll and mathematical treatises under his own name, refused to open letters addressed to him as Lewis Carroll. Some authors, such as Harold Robbins, use several literary pseudonyms. Some pen names have been used for long periods, even decades, without the author's true identity being discovered, such as Elena Ferrante and Torsten Kroll. Some pen names are not strictly pseudonyms, as they are simply variants of the author's actual names. The authors C. L. Moore and S. E. Hinton were female authors who used the initialized forms of their full names. C. L. Moore was Catherine Lucille Moore, who wrote in the 1930s male-dominated science fiction genre, and S. E. Hinton author of The Outsiders, is Susan Eloise Hinton. Star Trek writer D.C. Fontana, Dorothy Catherine, wrote using her abbreviated own name and also under the pen names Michael Richards and J. Michael Bingham. Author V.C. Andrews intended to publish under her given name of Virginia Andrews, but was told that, due to a production error, her first novel was being released under the name of V.C. Andrews, later she learned that her publisher had in fact done this deliberately. Joanne Kathleen Rowling published the Harry Potter series under the shortened name J.K. Rowling. Rowling also published the Cormoran Strike series, a series of detective novels including The Cuckoo's Calling under the pseudonym Robert Galbraith. Winston Churchill wrote under the pen name Winston S. Churchill from his full surname Spencer Churchill which he did not otherwise use, in an attempt to avoid confusion with the American novelist of the same name. In this case, the attempt was not entirely successful, and the two are still sometimes confused be booksellers. A pen name may be used specifically to hide the identity of the author, as in the case of expose books about espionage or crime, or explicit erotic fiction. Some prolific authors adopt a pseudonym to disguise the extent of their published output. For example Stephen King writing as Richard Bachman. Co-authors may choose to publish under a collective pseudonym, for example, P. J. Tracy and Perry O'Shaughnessy. Frederick Donay and Manfred Lee used the name Ellery Queen as both the pen name for their collaborative works and as the name of their main character. A famous case in French literature was Roman Gary. Already a well-known and highly acclaimed writer, he started publishing books under the pen name Emile Ajar. He wanted to test whether his new books would be well received on their own merits and without the aid of his established reputation, and they were. Emile Jar, like Roman Gary before him, was awarded the prestigious Prix Goncourt by a jury unaware that both were the same person. Similarly, Ronnie Barker submitted comedy material under the name of Gerald Wiley. A collective pseudonym may represent an entire publishing house, or any contributor to a long running series especially with juvenile literature. Examples include Wadi Piper, Victor Appleton, Aaron Hunter, and Kamaru M. Han. Another use of a pseudonym in literature is to present a story as being written by the fictional characters in the story. The series of novels known as a series of unfortunate events are written by Daniel Handler under the pen name of Lemony Snicket, a character in the series. An anonymity pseudonym or multiple use name is a name used by many different people to protect anonymity. It is a strategy that has been adopted by Manyung connected radical groups and by cultural groups, where the construct of personal identity has been criticized. This has led to the idea of the open pop star. Pseudonyms and acronyms are often employed in medical research to protect subjects' identities through a process known as de-identification. In Ancien Régime France, a nom de guerre, war name, would be adopted by each new recruit, or assigned to them by the captain of their company, as he enlisted in the French army. These pseudonyms had an official character and were the predecessor of identification numbers. Soldiers were identified by their first names, their family names, and their noms de guerre, for example, Jean Amaral Ditlafidolite. These pseudonyms were usually related to the soldier's place of origin, for example, Jean de Londit Champigny, 
for a soldier coming from a town named Champigny, or to a particular physical or personal trait, for example Antoine Bonnet did pret boire for a soldier pret boire ready to drink. In 1716, a nom de guerre was mandatory for every soldier, officers did not adopt noms de guerre as they considered them derogatory. In daily life, these aliases could replace the real family name. Noms de guerre were adopted for security reasons by members of the World War II French Resistance and Polish Resistance. Such pseudonyms are often adopted by military special forces soldiers, such as members of the SAS and other similar units, resistance fighters, terrorists, and guerrillas. This practice hides their identities and may protect their families from reprisals, it may also be a form of dissociation from domestic life. Some well known men who adopted noms de guerre include Carlos. For Illich Ramirez Sanchez, Willy Brandt, Chancellor of West Germany, and Subcomandante Marcos, the spokesman of the Zapatista Army of National Liberation, EZLN. During Lehigh's underground fight against the British in Mandatory Palestine, the organization's commander Yitzhak Shamir, later Prime Minister of Israel, adopted the nom de guerre Michael, in honor of Ireland's Michael Collins. Revolutionaries and resistance leaders, such as Lenin, Trotsky, Golda Meir, Philippe Leclerc de Hauteclock, and Josep Rose Tito, often adopted their noms de guerre as their proper names after the struggle. George Grivas, the Greek Cypriot Ioka militant, adopted the nom de guerre Digenis, Delta Iota Gamma Epsilon Nu Sigma. In the French Foreign Legion, recruits can adopt a pseudonym to break with their past lives. Mercenaries have long used noms de guerre, even sometimes multiple identities depending on country, conflict and circumstance. Some of the most familiar noms de guerre today are the kunya used by Islamic Mujahideen. These take the form of a technonym, either literal or figurative. Individuals using a computer online may adopt or be required to use a form of pseudonym known as a handle, a term deriving from CB slang, username, login name, avatar, or, sometimes, screen name, gamer tag IGN, in game, nickname, or nickname. On the internet, Pseudonymous remailers use cryptography that achieves persistent pseudonymity, so that two-way communication can be achieved, and reputations can be established, without linking physical identities to their respective pseudonyms. Aliasing is the use of multiple names for the same data location. More sophisticated cryptographic systems, such as anonymous digital credentials, enable users to communicate pseudonymously, i.e., by identifying themselves by means of pseudonyms. In well-defined abuse cases, a designated authority may be able to revoke the pseudonyms and reveal the individual's real identity. Use of pseudonyms is common among professional esports players, despite the fact that many professional games are played on LAN. People seeking privacy often use pseudonyms to make appointments and reservations. Those writing to advice columns in newspapers and magazines may use pseudonyms. Steve Wozniak used a pseudonym when attending the University of California. Berkeley after co-founding Apple Computer because, he said, I knew I wouldn't have time enough to be an A-plus student. When used by an actor, musician, radio disc jockey, model, or other performer or show business personality a pseudonym is called a stage name, or, occasionally, a professional name, or screen name. Members of a marginalized ethnic or religious group have often adopted stage names, typically changing their surname or entire name to mask their original background. Stage names are also used to create a more marketable name, as in the case of Creighton Tell Cheney, who adopted the pseudonym Lon Cheney Jr., a reference to his famous father Lon Cheney, Sr. Chris Curtis of Deep Purple fame was christened as Christopher Crummy. In this and similar cases a stage name is adopted simply to avoid an unfortunate fun. Pseudonyms are also used to comply with the rules of Performing Arts Guilds, Screen Actors Guild, SAG, Writers Guild of America, East. WGA, AFTRA, etc., which do not allow performers to use an existing name, in order to avoid confusion. For example, these rules required film and television actor Michael Fox to add a middle initial and become Michael J. Fox, to avoid being confused with another actor named Michael Fox. This was also true of author and actress Fanny Flagg, who chose this pseudonym, her real name, Patricia Neal, being the name of another well known actress, and British actor Stuart Granger whose real name was James Stewart. The filmmaking team of Joel and Ethan Cohen, for instance, share credit for editing under the alias Roderick James. 
Another example is that actor Gary Morgan used his fictional name Barnard Penansky in the kids' songs I'd Like to Teach the World to Sing video while in kids' songs, very silly songs, his actual name appears in the credits. Some stage names are used to conceal a person's identity, such as the pseudonym Alan Smithy, which was used by directors in the Directors Guild of America DGA to remove their name from a film they feel was edited or modified beyond their artistic satisfaction. In theater, the pseudonyms George or Georgina Spelvin, and Walter Plinge are used to hide the identity of a performer, usually when he or she is doubling, playing more than one role in the same play. David Agnew was a name used by the BBC to conceal the identity of a scriptwriter, such as for the Doctor Who serial City of Death, which had three writers, including Douglas Adams, who was at the time of writing the show's script editor. In another Doctor Who serial, The Brain of Morbius, writer Taron Stix demanded the removal of his name from the credits saying it could go out under a bland pseudonym. This ended up being the name Robin Bland. Musicians and singers can use pseudonyms to allow artists to collaborate with artists on other labels while avoiding the need to gain permission from their own labels, such as the artist Jerry Samuels, who made songs under Napoleon XIV. Rock singer-guitarist George Harrison, for example, played guitar on Cream's song Badge using a pseudonym. In classical music, some record companies issued recordings under a nom de disque in the 1950s and 1960s to avoid paying royalties. A number of popular budget LPs of piano music were released under the pseudonym Paul Procopolis. Another example is that Paul McCartney used a dysfictional name Bernard Webb for Peter and Gordon's song Woman. Pseudonyms are also used as stage names in heavy metal bands, such as Tracy Guns in L.A. Guns, Axl Rose and Slash in Guns N' Roses, Mick Mars in Motley Crue, Dimebag Daryl in Pantera, or C.C. Deville in Poison. Some of these names have additional meanings, like that of Brian Hugh Warner, more commonly known as Marilyn Manson, Marilyn coming from Marilyn Monroe and Manson from convicted serial killer Charles Manson. Jacoby Shaddix of Papa Roach went under the name Kobe Dick during the Infest era. He changed back to his birth name when Love Hate Tragedy was released. David Johansson, frontman for the hard rock band New York Dolls recorded and performed pop and lounge music under the pseudonym Buster Point Extra in late 1980s and early 1990s. The music video for Point Extra's debt single, Hot Hot Hot, opens with a monologue from Johansson where he notes his time with the New York Dolls and explains his desire to create more sophisticated music. Ross Bagdasarian, senior, creator of Alvin and the Chipmunks, wrote original songs, arranged, and produced the records under his real name but performed on them as David Seville. He also wrote songs using the name Skipper Adams. Danish pop pianist Bent Fabric, whose full name is Bent Fabricius Bjer, wrote his biggest instrumental hit Alley Cat under the name Frank Bjorn. For a time, the musician Prince used an unpronounceable love symbol as a pseudonym, Prince is his actual first name rather than a stage name. He wrote the song Sugar Walls for Sheena Easton under the alias Alexander Nevermind and Manic Monday for the Bengals as Christopher Tracy. He also produced albums early in his career as Jamie Starr. Many Italian-American singers have used stage names as their birth names were difficult to pronounce, or considered too ethnic for American tastes. Dot singers changing their names included Dean Martin, born Dino Paul Crosetti, Connie Francis, born Conchetta Francanero, Frankie Valli, born Francesco Castellutio, Tony Bennett, born Anthony Benedetto, and Lady Gaga, born Stefani Germanata. In 2009, British rock band Feeder briefly changed their name to Renegades so they could play a whole show featuring a set list in which 95% of the songs played were from their forthcoming new album of the same name, with none of their singles included. Frontman Grant Nicholas felt that if they played as Feeder, there would be an uproar that they did not play any of the singles, so used the pseudonym as a hint. A series of small shows were played in 2010, at 250 to 1,000 capacity venues with the plan not to say who the band really are and just announce the shows as if they were a new band. In many cases, hip-hop and rap artists prefer to use pseudonyms that represent some variation of their name, personality, or interests. Prime examples include Iggy Azalea, her name comes from her dog name, Iggy, and her home street in Mullumbimby, Azalea Street, Old Dirty Bastard, who was known under at least six aliases, Diddy previously known at various times as Puffy, P. Diddy, and Puff Daddy, Ludacris, Flo Rida, his name is attributed to his home state, Florida, LL Cool J, and Chingy. Black metal artists also adopt pseudonyms, usually symbolizing dark values, such as Nocturno Culto, Gaal, 
Avath, and Silenos. In punk and hardcore punk, singers and band members often replace their real names with tougher-sounding stage names, such as Sid Vicious, real name John Simon Ritchie, of the late 1970s band Sex Pistols and Rat of the early 1980s band The Varuckers and the 2000s reformation of Discharge. Punk rock band The Ramones also had every member take the last name of Ramon. Henry John Deutsch and Dorf Jr., an American singer-songwriter used the stage name John Denver. The Australian country musician born Robert Lane changed his name to Tex Morton. Reginald Kenneth Dwight legally changed his name to Elton John in 1972. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.